Hey, welcome to the first class of functional programming for JavaScript developers. Uh, again, here's just a quick overview of uh, some of the stuff we're going to be covering in the class. Uh, we're going to be going over concepts that are all tied to functional programming. One of the things I want you to get through this um, class that functional pro programming, as we're going to understand in a little bit, you've probably already been doing some of it and you haven't even noticed. So I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible and I'm going to try to um, break down some of the vocabulary that I think a lot of people throw around and that you might have heard, you know, being thrown around in different circles that, uh, that I believe, and especially it was my case when I was starting off, just confused the hell out of me. Okay. So again, let's just go over what we're going to learn during the uh, course. And then uh, let's just jump right into it. And then, you know, like I explained in the introduction video, we are also going to be refactoring an application that's already done in an object oriented programming um, style. We're going to refactor it into a um, functional programming style. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and also create our own uh, application from scratch. That way, you don't just get the theory behind functional programming, you actually get your hands dirty. We do some work together and then, uh, you know, refactoring an application. So whether you're going into a situation where there's already some legacy code uh, that has been, you know, uh, committed and then your job is to refactor that so that you'll have the skill or whether you're out in the wild and you just see some of this code, uh, you will also be able to understand it. And then uh, the other part of the course uh, will actually be creating our own application from scratch. And uh, that way you will see that it's not really that complicated. Okay. And, uh, you know, also I would try to simplify all this as, uh, as much as I can. Now I I'm going to be completely honest with you. I am not, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, you know, a, um, a, the most, let's just put it this way, the most competent, uh, functional programming expert, right? There are people that have been doing this for many, many years. And, and again, you know, just based on their background, uh, there is, um, there is a lot that goes into any single topic and functional programming is no exception. So what I hope this class does for you is that, uh, be, you know, besides understanding that the concepts of uh, functional programming, especially in the context of uh, JavaScript, that, uh, that you do like, uh, what we're going into that you, you know, can see that it's something that you can do. And then that way you can, uh, dive deeper into other, uh, subjects or uh, topics that you want to explore. Again, I think, uh, overall, once you learn functional programming, it really does help uh, create programs that are in, and this is one of the main benefits I see with uh, this style of programming versus object oriented. Uh, it allows you to create more maintainable code. And let's just talk about that for a second. You know, and uh, by the way, the, the some of the slides and resources that I'm going to be providing to you, I have completely swiped from uh, mentors of mine. So, you know, I, I'm all right, so let's get into why functional programming and specifically let's let's start getting into some of the some of the topics that we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to switch over to sketchbook over here so that I can show you with a little diagram. Uh, and, and again, this is why I think it's so important that we cover these uh, bases first, because once we get into it, you will see that once you understand the, the, the intent behind why functional pro programming exists and uh, the reasons why everybody, you know, or there, there's a lot of um, enthusiasm around this community. Uh, but I think before we get into that, it's important to understand why, what, what it tries to solve versus, uh, object oriented programming. So let's, again, let's, let's, let's think about what a program is and let's take a step back for a second. Okay. So if we think of a program, okay, usually what we have is this, usually we have some data somewhere. Okay. Then, um, we also have, uh, some, some way to display the data. So we'll call this the UI. And, uh, and then what we have is uh, usually somewhere that uh, we can make, um, you know, some API that we're calling uh, or our server. Okay, and, and this was really the, the model for a long time. So this is the MVC, MVC um, kind of framework, which is model view controller. And if you guys have ever worked with uh, Ruby on Rails or uh, anything like that, this is, um, this is kind of the style that uh, those, um, those frameworks that uh that they adopt um now when react came along and if you have done any react programming then uh, a lot of functional reactive programming started becoming more uh into the forefront but again it, it kind of goes to show that this is what big companies uh companies like facebook companies that have um code bases that are large and need to be maintained 
this is the approach that they opt into okay so it, it, th there's kind of a clue of how important this is and that's when it really becomes important so when you're thinking about how to architect your programs and um, not just architect but how does how does the program actually work and that's kind of what let's go over that um, now so that uh, so that you you can kind of get a you know a deeper understanding and actually know what's happening behind the scenes of your program so Again, the MVC model is uh, it's a good model, but as you start scaling, you will see that uh, you know that it kind of hits certain limits. Well, part of the limits is maintainability. Okay, so maintainability is such a huge thing, um, especially if you're trying to grow a team, especially if you're trying to become a developer and incorporate yourself into a team. Uh, have maintainable code uh, is one of the things that will stop any team the most. Just debugging. Uh, debugging, if you don't set up your programs correctly, it just becomes a nightmare, you know, as you start scaling. Um, also, um, you know, complexity. And uh, this kind of deals with uh, maintainability. But complexity is a little different. Uh, and this is... Um, okay, so for this next part of the class, I'm actually going to be, again, completely swiping uh, Kyle's uh, presentation. Uh, and the reason for this is he actually did a very good job. And he... And again, all the links are included in here. Uh, in the class notes so you know review some of those uh, links that actually go into more depth uh, than the class if uh, you know maybe we'll go into some details over here that um, and then he explains it a little bit different so I always like to learn things from many different uh, perspectives I think that um, that helps and especially when you're learning something new that uh, at the beginning you know it just seems a little bit overwhelming um, you know it's good to simplify it and then see how different people explain it so you can get different insights from uh, different teachers so Anyways, just wanted to give you that uh, aside. So let's, uh, before we begin, let's talk about functions, okay? Uh, and then the difference uh, between functions and procedures. And I think Kyle made a really interesting observation when uh, when he was teaching this. So let's look at these two uh, functions. And uh, and again, this is, uh, you know, hopefully you, you guys all understand JavaScript because we won't be covering uh, JavaScript in this course specifically, but uh, we do cover that in other courses. Um, so let's look at the add numbers function. So the add numbers function, uh, you know, if, if we were to say, you know, what's the difference between a pure function, okay, and that's a term that you hear a lot in functional programming, a pure function and an impure function, okay? So a pure function, why, why is this not uh, a pure function, the, the first one? So there's, there's a difference between procedures, okay, and then uh, functions with, which actually computate something, right? So a procedure is some... some you, you can almost think about it like a set of instructions that you're giving, uh, you know, the, the computer or a set of uh, instructions that you're giving to, to some process in your computer. And again, you know, because of functional programming, we can parallelize these things and then, you know, split them. But th th the main idea is in functions, you want to create functions that actually describe Okay, what they're doing. That's the first concept that we want to understand. Okay, now if we look at this add numbers function, we can see that it gets all its parameters, okay, from uh, from the function signature. So, and then everything that it's using within the function, so to calculate, you know, to do its work, comes in within the signature. So if it's not in the signature set as a default, it's not using anything outside of its uh, function scope, okay? So over here, we have a function that calculates some total, so x, y, z, uh, and w, and then we get a total number. But then what do we do with it, okay? Uh, we console log it out to the, we, we console log that uh, that value out to the console. Okay, now what's what's the issue with this? Well, in order for something to be a function, and this will be the first definition that you want to take note of, it has to return something, right? So if it doesn't return a value, okay, and undefined by the way, even if it returns undefined, that is a return. But it, every function needs to have a return uh, statement, okay? Otherwise, it's not a function. All right, so now we got function purity out of the way. And again, that's just the beginning. Honestly, it goes much deeper than this, but you have the core concepts and you have more importantly than that, the idea of what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to reason about our programs, which is a part that's pure and a part that's impure. And you know, we're not so concerned about the, the names at this point, but simply what that means is, hey, here's a part that's predictable and here's a part where we're gonna be doing other stuff, right? That's not predictable. And what we wanna do is we wanna separate those parts of the program. So if we have a bug, we know where those bugs are, right? So we're not looking all over the place. And again, as your applications get bigger, that's uh, really when it starts paying dividends because believe me, if you've ever tra uh, tried to track down a bug for like one day, two days, 
it's it's just not fun, right? And that's not what you want your team doing, right? You want your team creating applications and dealing with uh, users and making just, you know, that's what we come to write applications to make better user experiences. And that's why, you know, uh, using some of these functional programming uh, concepts, you know, maybe you don't have to get your whole application to be, uh, you know, in a functional pro pro um, programming style. But now you can start putting parts of your application and understanding why those parts are that way uh, and you know start transferring your code over uh, bit by bit okay so now let's get into arguments and again um, you know wh what does it all mean now if, if you've taken a calculus class or an algebra class this should make you know perfect sense to you but even if you haven't it's not that complicated okay the arguments are the variables that we pass into the functions okay uh, on, on one end they're called, uh, they're called parameters on the other end they're called arguments so when they are in the function uh, description right those are the arguments when they are uh, when we're calling them. So we're actually calling the function. Those are the parameters of the function, or vice versa. It's one or the other, but that's pretty much the idea. Okay, one is the the, the arguments that the function takes in. The other one is when the function is actually being called. The the variables that we're passing into it. Okay, so that's um, those are the parameters and those are the arguments. Now the thing about functional programming that's uh, that's very interesting and this you know kind of, you know, something I've been alluded to, alluding to uh, throughout the course is we want to think about, uh, you know, pieces, right? Our, our program is composed of these Lego pieces that we're going to eventually uh, combine to create our application, okay? And that's where arguments and, uh, and, uh, and parameters come in. Now, the reason being is, let's say you have a Lego piece, right? And one of the holes is bigger than the other. Then those Lego pieces don't compose, right? Automatically, you're dealing with something that doesn't fit together, okay? Um, and and that's why that's what we're going to be calling uh, throughout this uh, this portion of the class the shape of the function, okay? Or the shape of your uh, of of your program, okay? Or however you want to um, word it. But that's kind of what we're going to be talking about, okay? Okay. In this next section, we are going to be talking about uh, three functions that I want to go over before we actually get into uh, refactoring our application. Um, and again, now that we've covered how functions are made up, okay, and what is the, um, what is a pure function versus an impure function? Uh, and also now that we have gone over what, um, you know, how, how to structure our functions so that we can compose them together eventually to make our application. The next thing we want to go over, it's a few operators that you might be familiar with, but, uh, there are a few that we're going to be using over and over again. So it's good to just review them. And, uh, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and get into our, our um, the refactoring our application part of the course, okay? So let's jump in into our editor. And uh, the first application, so I'm just gonna make a collection here, okay? Now, a few things. I'm gonna say var, um, and then one, let's just say var collection equals one, okay? So first of all, what is a collection, okay? And a collection, we can say it's one, two, three. So it, it's just a list of things, but it also can be, and this is a distinction we wanna make. It can also be um, a collection of one thing, right? So that's the first thing. A lot of people, when they hear the word collection, uh, they think a list of things, okay? But, uh, uh, or a list, okay? Not in this case. In this case, we wanna think of collection as anything, okay? It's, it could be a collection of just one value, okay? It doesn't need to be a collection of more than one, uh, and again, this is going to become important once we start developing an, uh, our application. So that's the first thing. So let's let's actually create a, a bigger uh, collection here. So of five numbers, and let's um, let's create a function called sum. Okay, and our sum is going to take um, an x, and it's going to return that x plus one. Okay, so this is a very uh, simple function that uh, we've covered before. And now what we're going to do is we're going to learn our first operator. So the first operator is going to become map, okay? Uh, and the map operation goes like this. We can map over a collection, so iterate over a collection, and then we, and it's better just to show you than it is to um. So so you can get an idea, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pass it the number sum. And uh, the the function sum, and then uh, let's console log um what uh what this is at the end okay so let's let's collect this value in the result okay and then uh let's console log out the result okay 
And as you can see, we get a new collection back with the two, the three, the four, the five, and the six. All right. So that's um that's what map does. So map pretty much iterates over a collection, okay, and applies. This is usually called okay. For this part of the course, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a, a little application. First, we're going to write it in an object-oriented style. So everybody should be uh, pretty familiar with that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to refactor this into a functional style of programming. And uh, the reason for is that sometimes uh, if you're working, especially with a team, this is where you'll see this, is that you have to uh, inherit some legacy code. And part of uh, inheriting the legacy code is that you might want to refactor that okay but first let's see how uh this is usually the way that you'll see some code written and uh and then you'll see how we refactor it into a uh, functional style of programming and i think this is a very useful exercise especially because this is usually the situation that most people or most developers find themselves in uh when they're coming into some legacy code and uh, it, it'll be good just to uh, get that practice so um okay let's go over the index file so once you open up your um your resources under apps, under calculator. So that kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to be creating. And it's going to be a calculator very similar to something you might find on a phone or, you know, just very simple calculator. So don't think this will be like a scientific calculator or anything. And uh, what we're going to be doing is, let me just walk you through the HTML file. And the HTML file, it's very simple. It's just a couple of divs with some classes on it. Uh, the index, uh, the CSS has a styling for it. So that'll be provided for you as well as a scaffolding for the main app. Uh, and again, it's just, you know, some, uh, a few classes that are going to be important. So we have the calculated display over here. Um, and then I'll show you what that looks like on the, on the browser. We have some data actions. We'll be using that for, uh, from some state, um, you know, storing the state and then changing it. So that'll be, and if you don't know about the data attribute, uh, for HTML elements, check that out. There's a lot of good resources online, uh, but pretty much it's, um, it's just a handler. For, uh, for us to be able to um, get access to this element and then we'll change it with JavaScript, their values. Uh, and then we have uh, other uh, classes over here, which are the digits themselves. So these are from zero to nine. Over here, we have the operators, we'll call them, which are addition, subtraction, division, and um, <clears throat> the calculate and the clear sign, okay? And then uh, down here, we're just uh, loading a JavaScript file, which I'll show you, has nothing on it for uh, as of right now. And then if we go uh, online, we see that we have a, uh, a calculator styled, looking pretty nice, uh, but it actually doesn't do anything. So let's get into that, okay? So the first thing that we might wanna do is we, we have to get um, let's, okay? As you can see online here, we, we have the display and then we also have the keys, okay? And, uh, and also there is the document uh, calculator. So I think those are three three good uh, places to start. So let's start storing that in, uh, in some variables. Okay, now let's get into the refactored code. And then this is gonna be a completely, uh, we're gonna try to in incorporate uh, the concepts that we learned earlier in the course about functional programming style. Okay, so uh, pretty much the only thing that changed, I'm gonna leave this code here in the calculator file. That was the previous code we were using. And in the calculator refactor code, uh, again, it's a blank slate right now. Uh, all that change over here on the index.html, it's a uh, calculator refactor. By the way, if you're wondering what, um, what I'm using to, um, to host the application, it's a little live, I think it's called live server uh, for Visual Studio Code, if you're using Visual Studio Code. But if not, just search online. There is a uh, like little Python scripts or something that you can uh, just start very minimalistic servers. Uh, but again, I have just a plugin installed on uh, Visual Studio Code. I'll, I'll I'll look it up and put it in the class notes that way that uh, you guys have it. But just install it and then you know this allows us to um, you know just click over here and then it spins up an app for us, a uh, little server. Um, and it's again, you know, we don't have to install React or anything like that. Again, you don't get all the benefits of like, you know, the transpiler with like Babel and all that stuff. But uh, again, I think for what we're doing and for understanding these concepts, I don't think it's necessary to under, uh, to uh, install, uh, you know, some framework or anything. I think, um, you know, these uh, these concepts um, translate in not just across frameworks, but across languages as well. So that's the important thing that we want to get uh, wanna get from this. Okay. So anyways, let's get started on the refactored uh, code. And we're gonna be using uh, an awesome library. I believe it's uh, created by Microsoft 
uh, believe it or not. And um, let's, it's called the RxJS, okay? And again, uh, I think in almost any language that you, you might be writing code in, uh, they have a version of this. So if you learn it in one, they're, it's pretty much um, reusable anywhere. So, and again, th this is actually a, uh, a very extensive observable. Uh, I'm just going to import a few things from, uh, from the library just to get a, get us started here from, um, from event, uh, from pipe. Okay. Uh, and then RxJS. So this is a very extensive library to be honest with you. And, uh, and and it's a much deeper topic but essentially what we're getting into here it's not just functional programming but functional reactive programming and and again if you've ever used react um so we're, we're going to be merging these two concepts now and uh pretty much what uh what it allows us to do is use functional programming styles but at the same time with this library we're we're not going to have to write all of these utilities that we were writing before because they've already done a lot of this work for us okay and again it has been tested it has been used in production for, uh, I believe,